Hey guys, welcome to Code School 101. This is Jules. And this is Andrew. This introductory video is about getting you up and running with Python. Jules, why don't you get us started and I'll tell everyone a bit about this series. In the Coursera class, you learned how to make games using Code Sculptor and Simple GUI. While you were learning, you knew you could focus on making your games and rely on Simple GUI to just work as it should. In this series, we reverse the process. We're going to give you a game that already works in Code Sculptor and your task will be to rewrite portions of Simple GUI so that the game works outside of Code Sculptor. Each week we'll give you a game similar to the one we made in class. Then we'll show you all the parts of Pi game you need to be able to use to re-implement the Simple GUI components so the game works. Hey Jules, how's it coming along? Oh, uh, yeah, I'm just about ready. Give me one more minute. By the end of the series, you'll know how to replace the parts that use Simple GUI. So you'll not only be able to update games you made in class, you'll also be able to make new ones using Pygame. Okay, let's get started on installing Python in Pygame. It should only take about an hour, and we're going to guide you through the whole thing. The first thing you need to do is download Linux. Um, yeah, I'm already done. Okay guys, here's how you do it. Step 1. Go to this website and download the file for Python version 2.7. Step 2. Run the file. Okay, so now open the folder where you installed the file and run PyScripter, and we'll get down to coding. Wait, that's it? I spent like two days figuring out how to install Python and Pygame and get everything working nicely, and you just did it in two minutes? Seriously? Ugh. I think I broke him. Anyway... Each week we will follow the same process. First we will show you new things you can do with Pygame. Then we will show you how to take working Code Sculptor games and convert the simple GUI elements to Pygame elements. Next we will go over the optional assignment for that week. Finally we'll talk about other things you might find useful. This could be anything from general game structure to advanced Pygame features to how to make your own sprites. How you doing over there Andrew? I think I'm okay now. Think you can tell everyone what this PyScriptor is all about since you chose this and I had absolutely nothing to do with that choice? Yeah, I think I can handle that. Okay, so PyScriptor is what we call an IDE, which stands for Integrated Development Environment. That's just a fancy name for a program that software developers use to make things easier. IDEs often incorporate dynamic reactions to what the user is doing. CodeSculptor was an IDE. In fact, it still is. When we would type in the interface, the colors of certain words would change. That was to help us to see the difference between functions, comments, and so forth. PyScriptor does the same thing, and also a lot more. So, what if I want the colors of PyScriptor to be different? Like, let's say I'm not too excited about teal and olive. Or, what if I like the code sculptor colors better? Well, Jules, you can change how the colors appear to suit your own preferences by going to Tools, Options, Editor Options, and then selecting the Syntax Colors tab. On this screen, you choose an element, pick the color you want, and change the text attributes. When you are satisfied, click OK to keep the change. Now as you type, it will color your elements accordingly. Wait just a second, Andrew. I have a gripe about PyScriptor and colors. What is with this horrible blue Retro Reject Office 2003 theme? And how can I change it before I go blind? For that, you just click on View, Themes, and then select a theme you like better. What's with all these different frames? I mean, I can tell I probably write my code here, and this bottom portion looks like it's probably where my output will show up, kind of like the right side of the Code Sculptor window. But what's this one on the side for? The frame to the left I'll call the Explorer frame. It includes several page views you can select between on these tabs at the bottom. The first is the File Explorer, so you can search for files on your computer. The second is the Project Explorer. This lets you organize and search for your code files. And the last one is the Code Explorer. This is the best of all. This shows you an outline of your code. Not only that, but all the elements are dynamic, so if you aren't sure what something is, you can hover over it and get more information, 
like what arguments a function takes. Also, it will show you all your imports, all your global variables, and all your classes. These are expandable and collapsible. The great thing about this explorer is that you don't have to scroll up and down constantly in your code. Just click on the part you need to go to next and it will automatically jump to that portion of your code with the selected item highlighted. No more scrolling back and forth? That's pretty great actually. Okay, I'm starting to see the benefits of this ID. But this default module 1 that popped up, is that going to be there every time? Because it doesn't even have my name right, and the date is weird and showing the days first, then the month. Can I just start with a blank page? Or better yet, could I make it start with comment sections that remind me of how I should structure my code? Absolutely you can decide how your template looks. You can make it as detailed or empty as you like. Just go to Tools again, then go to Options and select File Templates. On this screen, you can select the name of the template you want to edit. Details of the selected template are displayed below, including the template contents. You can change anything you like. This tool lets you edit existing templates and create new ones. Any existing templates can be used when you create a new file using the File, New, New File command. Okay, but I bet there may be one last question everyone is wondering about. What is this part at the bottom of the code for? If name equals main. Finally, here's a question I know the answer to. This is standard practice to put at the bottom of your code. What it does is if the code is imported by another piece of code, then name will be the name of the file. But if the code is just being run directly, name will be main. So this little conditional combined with this main function will start the code only if it's not being imported by another code. But the only way this works is if all the actions, like starting a frame or timer, or calling your first function or class, are put inside this main function, or included in the if name equals main code block. It's not that big of a deal if this doesn't make perfect sense to you yet. You can take it off for now. You could leave it on and just make sure you put your action calls in this code block. Or you can leave it on, but comment it out for now, and change it later when you understand it better. We will be continuing to use it throughout the rest of this series, so there should be ample opportunities for you to see how it should be used. Hey Jules, I think everyone is probably comfortable with PyScriptor and Python. How about we show them how to make a frame with Pygame? Good idea, but I am definitely going back to that color changing stuff as soon as we're done. First, I need to import Pygame and Sys. Then, I'll create a function to hold all this new behavior. Let's call the new function frame. For now, frame will do all the work. Before I forget, I'm going to call frame from main. Next, I need to define my title, width, and height variables. Now I need to initialize pygame and start the frames per second clock. More on these two later, but for now, just know we have to do this whenever we start the game. Next, I need to create the window. Pygame does this using the display modules set mode function. We call it by passing in the width and height variables. The value returned is a window, which contains a surface. All drawing in Pygame is done on a surface. I'll store the return value in a variable called mySurface, but for now we won't be using it. Next, I'll set the window caption. At this point, We've done what the simple GUI create frame does, more or less. If we run the program, we'll see a window displayed, but it will be completely unresponsive. We won't even be able to close it. Note that to exit, I have to wait till Windows tells me the program is unresponsive and gives me the option to kill the process. That's because we haven't yet done the simple GUI equivalent of frame start. Let's do that now. That may seem like a lot of code. Let's look at each line. Notice the while loop is an infinite loop. We'll need to break out of it at some point. Next we have a for loop. It will iterate over all the event objects returned by the pygame event get method. This method retrieves all the messages since the last time it was called. As we loop over the events, we check the type of each event. If the type is quit, we know the user tried to close the program. We need to close the program now. 
The pygame quit function stops the pygame code, and the sysexit function exits the while loop and also exits the program. But wait, why do we need to stop the pygame code and close the program? If pygame is already getting a message to quit, why doesn't it just quit? The answer is that Pygame gives us an opportunity to close any files or network connections that we may have opened during the game. So now, when we run the program, we see that we can interact with the window, unlike before. And that's the whole process of starting a new frame. Okay, so now it's time to find out what the assignment is for this week. Since some of you are seeing Python and PyScriptor for the first time, the assignment this week is going to be pretty basic to give you an opportunity to get familiar with creating your own files, running them, and playing around with the features of PyScripter so you can get more comfortable. So assignment zero is to install Python 2.7, PyScripter, and Pygame. This can be done separately if you like, and the instructions are included in the assignment. Or you can simply download it from Portable Python as was shown in this video. Once you have it working, part two of the assignment is to create a code that prints to the console the funniest joke you know or can find. Please keep it family friendly and politically correct as people of all ages and backgrounds participate in this class. Part three of the assignment is for you to upload your code to Pastebin so you can easily share it with everyone. There are instructions for doing this in the assignment, but if you are having trouble with any part of this, you can post your question here or on any of our social sites. To get the assignment, just click on the link in the description section below. We have designed this series to last eight weeks. We're going to try and release new videos on Sundays and Thursdays. We may also add a few extra surprises along the way. So be sure to follow us on Google+, Facebook, and Twitter so you can stay updated on our latest video releases, special events, and other news. So Jules, Descartes walks into a bar. The bartender asks him if he's going to have a drink. He says, I think not, and disappears. Ta -da. Thank you for watching, and if you like this tutorial, please subscribe and click the like button.